Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we will understand the fundamental concepts of the Boolean. Uh, we have been learning uh, digital electronics and there Boolean is a very important area of understanding. And uh, here in Python also, we have got a lot of support for Boolean related operations and it supports Boolean. So what is it? And we will quickly go through some examples so that you guys can understand uh, how important it is and how exactly we can code it. So what is Boolean? Simple. When you go with Boolean, you have only two options. It's true or false. It's always binary. And we have no special guidelines to uh, accept the Boolean values into the variables or uh, to make it precise to create Boolean variables. Create it the same way that you have created. When you assign values, it will understand that it is a Boolean related operation. Very simple. You can see that here now, Boolean underscore demo is the variable name equal to true. Now, when you have true or false, the system, the Python understands that it is Boolean and it is all over there. So, Boolean underscore demo equal to true. Now, I am printing Boolean underscore demo. Boolean underscore demo equal to false. Now, I am printing Boolean underscore demo. So, see the output here. First time it is true. Second time it is false. This true and false is what I am talking as Boolean. Uh, let me change the pointer option as usual so that you can see it. True and false are the Boolean options and it is a very simple but yet very effective tool used in many cases which we are going to see in the future. Right. Let's also understand uh, some other uh, examples which are closely related to this type. Now see, 3 equal to equal to 3. Is it true? Yes, true. So the reply is true and this is Boolean. 3 equal to equal to 5. Is it correct? No, it is false. So I got a false. 3 not equal to 3. Is it true? No, it is false. I got a false. 3 less than or equal to 5. So these are all the uh, uh, operators that I can use. Um, uh, all these are the operators that one can uh, use to understand the scenarios clearly. See, uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, double equal to implies all these are relational. 1 greater than 2, 2 less than 1. If you see the results, that is what we want. 3 equal to equal to 3. That's true. I got a true. 3 not equal to 3. That's false. I got a false. And this is it. We are going to use it in many places in future. But all of them are dependent on this fundamental learning here. So understand Boolean is all about true or false. It's all about binary. Now, I'm going to write a small script here. Last time we have tried it in the command prompt and it was all commands. Now this time we are going to write a small script. Print 1 equal to equal to 1. So what is it? Is it true or false? True. So I've got a true here. Print 1 equal to equal to 2. Is it true or false? Certainly false. So false is here. 1 less than or equal to 2. It's true? Yes, true. 1 greater than or equal to true. That's false. Now string operations. You can see that such in equal to such in all the cases, all the characters are upper and lower case letters are matching. Hence it is true. Now not equal to such in. That's false. Small such in, lower case such in is equal to upper case such in. That's false. I've got a false here. 1.022 floating point operation. That's also correctly done. So you understand Boolean can be used for normal integers, uh, long integers, string operations and floating point operations. I don't have a problem there if I go with different data types, but still I got to use Boolean in feature. Now, we got to learn about the input functioning. So what is it? It's very simple. Uh, not all the times we can go with the static way of handling the input from the user, which means I can already assign a value to the variable and then I can operate on it. That might not work every time, right? At times we might want the user to feed the input real time and then to process it and to give him the output during the runtime itself, real time itself. Only then that's interactive programming. Otherwise we would not appreciate it. So for that to be done, we have got something called as input. So what is it? It's very simple. I'm going to have an example here. Print Hello user, welcome to the world of Python. This will be printed, this is just a printf statement like what we have in C, C programming and uh, uh, C out in C++. Print n river name. Now name underscore user is the variable name equal to input of n river name, which means this can be obtained from the user and will be assigned to this print name underscore user. So I have scanned the input from the user and I have assigned it to the name underscore user and I got it printed very clearly when I ran it. Now gender underscore user input of, can you please let me know your gender? Print gender underscore user. Now hello sir, I'm going to mix these two. Hello mister plus, see the way I'm using it, plus name underscore user, this is the variable name. Gender underscore user, this is the variable name. In between you can use whatever you want within double quotes that will be printed without processing it. Just like that it will be printed and that's all, we'll get an output here. Hello user, welcome to the world of Python. That's what was there. 
please enter your name enter your name shriram kv can you please let me know your gender mail mail is reflected hello mr shriram kv you are a male that's it this dynamic and real time approach where the user can feel it really interactive is achieved through this input uh, method so please follow it up and you can try it out with the different things also i sincerely prompt you guys to uh, grow and learn along with me uh, because once we grow and once we go to the next levels uh, it would be difficult if you do not have a hands on practice now uh, remember uh, input though you are uh, giving input as a number uh, most of the times almost every time it will be taken as a string uh, hash is used for commenting option and remember it i am going to use a lot of comments from here because in industry when we go and start coding uh, there is a guideline which says that 30% 20% of the coding should at least be comment line so that anybody can review it and understand it so when we joined a company during our earlier days that was the first thing that was given by uh, the trainers to us so please remember i am going to use a lot of commenting from here on so that you can also get that practice the learning shall grow and if you have any suggestions inputs queries please go ahead and type it in the comment section i hope this is useful and we will uh, see more of this sort in the near future as well and thank you very much for following my channel and supporting me thank you